Okay, a lot of action. I'm not in a good mood. Now we're gonna have sleep. Sheesh. How you doing? Doing fine, Charles. Thanks for asking. It's funny, uh, David Albert. We always gotta say, excuse me, who who are you? He says I'm the premier. I said a lot of people don't know you, but a lot of people know you. So, so what happened this morning? This morning occupied Fredericton. It's mm -hmm. all over. As you know, uh, Charles, uh, we had uh, our final meeting on New Year's Eve, which. Uh, was videoed and uploaded to YouTube. Uh, I think everybody had a chance to see it. A lot of people have watched it. And uh, I, I had been asking all along for an end date when we could bring this to a conclusion. Uh, they made it abundantly clear on New Year's Eve that they had no intentions of leaving. That one fellow who now claims that that's his residence, he lives there and changed his address, said that now I have two more people living with me, one from Halifax, one from Moncton. Uh, I felt at that time that, uh, that we were not going to gain any ground and, and going any further with this wasn't going to make a difference. And whether it was January 1st, March 1st or June the 1st, they still uh, would not have been very happy with it. So uh, I told them that that was unacceptable and that they uh, had until January 1st and to remove their personal effects. Why not wait to bring this in court? They wanted to uh, say, okay, let, let, a, let a court, a judge, decide. Well, you know, uh, uh, the matter was taken to court in other provinces on the, the Charter of Rights and Freedoms and the Constitution, and uh, they didn't win. I mean, it's only one charter, it's only one constitution. So, uh, you know, I think it's a real uh, waste of taxpayers' money to, to pay lawyers to go into a court uh, when you can work something out uh, between yourselves. Uh, you know, they may not know this, but, you know, I tried to, to, to help them. I agreed with their cause, uh, and I... I you were did, patient. I, I will admit that. Well, I did tell them, and it's, it's right on the video that, uh, you know, that, that they were losing support. You know, when this one fellow started saying, this is my home, I live here, uh, I've changed my address, uh, you know, the, 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 the public support started to wane after that, and, and it didn't get any better. So they were getting away from their, their message of Occupy, and it was more somebody was taking on, you know, uh, they, had, they had their own, their own issue, and, and uh, that wasn't good for them, and I could see that. So uh, basically this morning uh, at uh, 5 o'clock with the assistance of one uniformed police officer, one? One. I thought there was more than that. No, there was one, one uniformed police officer on the property who did nothing, who said nothing, who was only there in the event that uh, something would have happened to one of our staff or to one of the uh, occupiers. Uh, the public works people came in, removed the sign, How many? went to the door. How many workers? Uh, there was probably 10 or 12. They paid double time for that? Or? No, no. The, nobody received any overtime. These people were on shift and working. Uh, the police officer was on shift and working. The, uh, uh, the public works people are on shift and working. So no, it, there was no cost to the taxpayers. I mean, this is part of their job. Um, at 5 o'clock, uh, they uh, knocked on the door, uh, entered the property, uh, and uh, started removing all of the things that were uh, on the floor. Uh, the next, uh, while that was being done, they started uh, taking the tarps and taking the plastic off. Uh, the last thing that was standing was the, the wooden frame. Uh, that was pushed to the ground. Uh, Public Works had a small chainsaw. They, uh, they chunked that up and put it on the back of the truck, took their shovels, swept the property, and were back in the trucks and left, and that was at about 17 minutes after 5. Uh, I talked to the protesters, uh, asked them if they wanted uh, a ride. Uh, wanted a ride, if I could help them in any way. Uh, they asked about their property and I said, well, I did ask you to, to remove it. However, well, we don't want your personal effects. They will be available uh, for you to pick up today. Uh, the fellow from Halifax was very happy. He said, well, in Halifax, it took a long time to get it back. And I said, look, we don't want your property. Uh, and uh, it should be available for pickup today once we determine where it's going to be. Where is it? Across, across, well, somebody, across the river? The guy from Halifax has already come in. Uh, and he's already gone up and got it. What about the people that say you don't have the time, they don't want to have the time to waste this in court, but I don't want to talk about me, 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 but I got four trials that's coming. Now, yeah, you, I'm sure you'd be the first to say it's a waste of time. <laughs> you know. But, you know, I mean, you start stopping occupied Fredericton, then you stop people with blowhorns. Uh, isn't this the capital? 
Isn't this supposed to exist, you know, freedom of speech? Yeah, yeah, I watched that. I followed that very closely, Charles. And, you know, you and I uh, have been pretty good friends for a long time. Uh, your right to protest, I think, was fine. But I have to admit, with the blowhorn being there day after day after day after day... <coughs> a couple hours a day. A couple of hours a day. You know, you were, I don't think, really bothering the police in so much as you were bothering people that are working in that area down there. Oh, yeah. And I think they had a pretty fair, legitimate complaint. Yeah, but if you have, uh, what you're supposed to do is, uh, like the cops, we're going to talk about the cops. The uh, Nick Moore, a reporter, journalist for yeah. CTV, he said the police told him uh, not to, to stay across yes. the street. Yes. And if he dares to cross that, he'll yes. be arrested. Yes. And you're concerned... About no, uh, what I said to the one police officer who I was with uh, to to say, because uh, two other police cars showed up and they were both parked across the street, I said, the one thing I don't want is I don't want the public or anybody in here during this operation. But the media? For safety purposes. But the media? Well, you know, the media, as I said uh, this morning, the media could be across the street at Tony's Music Box. But it was dark. Well, it's just as dark there as it is in front of City Hall. No, but you need a close-up. You know, they got the lights. and the, I think those cameras are quite capable of shooting from Tony's music box to in front of City Hall. We'll find Charles. out tonight. Well, you know, here's what's happening. Uh, you know, somebody had said you should have had it videoed, and I said, well, in fact, it, it is. It, it was done. There's somebody. By, uh, by the occupiers. They, they filmed the whole thing. So you'll see that exactly what I said is exactly what took place. They, they got a shot of me standing there with the one police officer. There was no other police officers around. There was absolutely no, nothing said. I, I met with staff at 4.30 this morning. I said I want it done respectfully, peacefully, and efficiently. I want you in and I want you out. I don't want anybody hurt. I don't want any harm to come to the occupiers. And that's precisely what happened. I'm a little bit concerned about the cops here. I used to praise the cops. You know that. Yeah. And ever since my episode of the chief agreeing that the poor should be ticketed, like driving a bicycle on the sidewalk from a third party information, to denying the rich being ticketed, doesn't that show a double standard? Yeah, I. Uh, okay. okay. You know, I brought that up at a public meeting of the public safety in the public and questioned the chief on it and asked what is our policy on, on third-party complaints and issuing of tickets. Because I said that is not right. It doesn't matter who it is. It doesn't matter if you're rich or if you're poor, or you're tall or you're short, or you're French or you're English. You know, if I call up the police and say, this guy was riding his bike without a helmet, and you take my word and give him a ticket, that's wrong. Mm. And it shouldn't have happened, and, and it shouldn't mm. be happening now. And I think council agrees with that. So, uh, you know, I did what I could. Yeah, oh, yeah of course, now, of course, of course. Uh, because I disagree with it. And the fact of the matter is, in looking at your blog and looking at, uh, at your site, when you went down and videoed other people crossing the street and jaywalking, mm -hmm. then if that was the way it should be done and that's the way the law is, mm -hmm. then they should have given those people tickets. Yeah, but they didn't. What they didn't, and I don't think they should, and I don't think they should have given you one on, mm. based on a third-party uh, complaint. Okay. I know. But anyway, never mind me, me, me. So how are you feeling about all this? Mm. Uh, you're getting, uh, in, in Twitter, you seem to be a hero. Oh, good job. You're getting a lot of, a lot of support in Twitter. Well, you know what, Charles? I think, uh, and you've been involved in a lot of the sessions when I've been there, uh, I've done it just, you know, alone. Uh, I haven't taken people with me. Uh, I, it was I pretty good, New Year's Eve. Uh, it was very good, New Year's Eve. You know what? You could have uh, walked away. I could have walked away, and I tried to walk away, and they called me back. And yeah. I went back, and I answered every question that I could, including yeah. some that were rather, you know, uh, anyway. i seen that. Yeah, uh, but uh, you know what? I, I tried as hard as I could to set the example for the rest of the country, for both the city and for the occupiers. And on Thursday night that came, or on New Year's Eve that came to an end, and that was rather sad. I think it was wrong on their part. I think that we could have ended this with a press conference together that they could have dismantled and said, you know what, uh, the Occupy movement is, is not dead. We are going to uh, be going into another phase, and, uh, and whatever that happens to be, I don't know. And, I, and as I said to them, you can end it in a positive note. You don't have to be, have the public against you. So you're going to pass a bylaw, and then in the spring when they want, like you said, you don't want to start being like a barbecue and a hangout, like Officer Square I, years I, ago. I really uh, have uh, uh, 
You scared? You no, concerned? I'm not, no, I'm not scared. Uh, I'm not concerned. But I do not want anybody camping overnight uh, at any public space in the city of Fredericton uh, and occupying with the intent on taking up residence. Uh, we are doing everything we can now to strengthen our laws to ensure that we have uh, everything in place to prevent that from happening. And, uh, and I will do as much as I can to stop that. Uh, insofar as protests, I've said to uh, Occupy, you're welcome to come down to City Hall, you're welcome to bring your, your signs and protest like everybody no blow, else does. No blower, no. Well, they can <laughs> I had, read the sign. I, I had to say that. <laughs> Charles, you know what, you're not a bad guy, but every once in a while, and I've told you this before, you, you can sometimes go extreme. Sometimes you have a reason to. Yeah, uh, Scottish. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> okay, so the bottom line is, no more tenting in Fredericton. Uh, I think it's unacceptable. It's, un it's not only unacceptable to the elected people, Charles, it's unacceptable to the people who reside and who live here. I don't think anybody that lives in this city for one moment would, uh, would agree with uh, people setting up tents in Officer Square, in Odell Park, uh, along Waterloo Row. Uh, I just don't think people uh, would, uh, would want that to happen. And. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to let it happen. I think the spring could be interesting. Occupy and show gas. The teepees in front of the ledge, remember that? Yeah, could yeah. Be, could be, uh, I think people are changing. Something, uh, you're a smart guy, you do. Well, you know At what, times, first you know? of all, I have a great deal of uh, time and respect for the First Nations people. I grew up at, uh, you know, just uh, over there in Devon. Uh, went to school with a lot of uh, First Nations people. And uh, you know what, when it comes to the land and when it comes to the water, uh, these people uh, have to be uh, consulted and they have to be a part of uh, what's going on. And uh, you separate the First Nations people when you're dealing with the environment and uh, that could come back to bite you. Uh, so uh, they were here first. Uh, they have a, a great respect for the resources here and particularly the water, uh, the earth, and uh, uh, you uh, should be taking them very seriously. That was so well said, we'll leave it at that. Thank you very much.